vertical streaming has come a long way. You can now access vertical content on TVs, tablets, laptops, and of course, mobile phones. For the streamer or creator, there are some standard scenes or designs you want to have in your pocket to account for the different scenarios that come up during a live broadcast, especially vertical. I've shared that list for both EV Mux and Ecamm, but never for StreamYard because the functionality simply wasn't there. Until now, <laughs> let's review what we've built before and walk you through step by step how to do it in StreamYard, thanks to custom layouts for vertical. I'm also going to include some bonus info on YouTube streaming at the end. Let's dive in. <laughs> So the first thing we want to talk through is what we did in the past. I, I built out some stuff for both Ecamm and EVMux, and I want to show that to you. Uh, first, we want to look at those five Ecamm scenes, those five Ecamm vertical scenes. I'm going to do that really quick. So first, you have the host only scene, which you can see on screen right now. Then you have host plus guest. Then I've got a three camera scene. Uh, and then I've got another one where I've got a guest there plus my top down. Got a different one here that showcases myself and a screen share. And then you, you can scroll, of course, on that screen share. Then, of course, I have one with my comments and uh, you can see those comments coming in right there. Um, Ecamm also has this host plus widget thing that you can utilize where you can embed a website directly into a scene so you don't necessarily have to do uh, some of the other gymnastics like a screen share or other things to be able to do that. It's really clutch and that's why I always recommend Ecamm. In fact, that's what I'm using to record this video. If you're interested in checking that out, leave a comment below or hit up that link that's right on the screen right here. Uh, the next thing we want to talk through is what we can do inside EV Mux. Uh, EV Mux, we did the same thing. And again, we're going to showcase where we can find those. But you can see here on screen, I've got several scenes that we've designed inside EV Mux. And this is actually going to be a little bit more closely uh, familiar or related. It'll seem closer to what it will look like inside of StreamYard. Uh, EVMux also has a live comments widget. I'm gonna actually try to populate those comments right now. You can see those comments flowing in at the bottom right there. Then we have the host scene, the host plus guest, host plus uh, screen share, which is what you see right now. We can also do the three cameras there inside of EVMux along with a host only. EVMux, again, is another one of those platforms. They really push the envelope. Um, and, and in fact, I would even dare say that several of the functions and features we are enjoying from, from StreamYard currently is because of the existence of platforms like Ecamm and EVMux who are constantly pushing the needle. So that's pretty cool. Definitely want to make sure you guys get a chance to check out that previous video and we'll make sure to leave a card uh, somewhere here for you to be able to see just that. Um, I That previous video is actually on the screen right here. And um, definitely, again, we put a card right in the in the in the video, the YouTube video for you to be able to hit that up. We'll also put a link in the description and I will share that that previous video had a bonus attached to it. Um, some some ways for you to be able to download the scenes that I built built for both EVMux and Ecamm. So that might be a little bit of incentive to go and check out that video. But as, as mentioned, right, we want to get into uh, StreamYard uh, and how to build out these scenes. I'm going to try and build them out right here with you and uh, hopefully don't make this into an hour long video. But um, it, I think it's absolutely critical for us to be able to see this process because it is slightly different than what you would normally have from the other platforms. What, what, e, what StreamYard has done is they've combined these two things, meaning layouts and scenes. So here, this is what e StreamYard looks like standard. I've got my scenes here on the side. Another new feature inside scenes is the ability to be able to create a folder. So I have my my scenes folder here. My recommendation to you to keep things uh, neat is to create a new folder, which I'm going to do. I'm going to call this vertical. Boom create folder and I'm going to click on that to make it active. 
click here to show on stage, click here to change this one to host only, right? Just you just just clicking on the name of that first scene. Next thing I'm going to do is go here to where the wheel is and right here on this general screen of the settings, I'm going to go and actually select portrait. Portrait is going to allow me to do vertical and that's where we are. So we now have a vertical scene um, and host only means it's just me. So just this camera up here uh, and you can see I have these cameras down here already ready to go. Loaded those up earlier just so we can save a little bit of time. So host only first scene built out. This is a standard layout that we can just utilize right here from StreamYard. Next thing we want to do is host plus guest. I'm going to build this from scratch because I want you to see the process. So here, click on new scene. I'm going to click on speaker view. I got to be honest, it doesn't really matter which one you select. So I'm going to select this scene. It looks exactly the same as what the host only scene looks like. I always like to name it. <laughs> so let's play host plus guest. All right. This is still a vertical scene. Then we can actually just select the this cropped layout. So I, I select it and add this one to the stage. You can see this as long as this is blue and I get this question all the time. How do I, you know, I, I edited my scene, I created this new scene, but when I click on, when I go to it, it seems like it has changed. You want to make sure that it is in blue. So here I click on host only, notice host only. When I click here to go to host plus guest, notice host plus guest, and that I'm just using the standard layout. Now I'm going to build out one more scene. Watch the process here, clicking new scene speaker view. This scene has been created, but it has not been selected. Keep that in mind. It has been created, but it hasn't been selected. If you don't see this color on that scene, it hasn't been selected. I'm going to click it, show on stage, and I'm going to click on the name just to rename it. I'm going to say uh, three cameras, right? Three cameras. And so this is the scene. I'm going to create a new layout, new layout. It's blank add item. What do I want to, what do I want to add a camera slot? I want that camera slot to be, uh, want I actually want to make it wide. All right. I want to make it the size of my, you know, my whole camera. <laughs> there we go. Easiest thing to do now is just to hit the duplicate button and it automatically picks camera two. hit the duplicate button. It, it gives me a placeholder for camera three and I'm going to hit save and say three cameras, right? That's what I'm naming it. I'm naming the layout three cameras. And I'm also named I've I have also named the scene three cameras. But notice what happens. And I click to save it, it goes back to the original layout, because I just created a layout, but I have not selected that layout. So I'm in my scene that has three cameras, right? It says three cameras, you can see that that's selected. But this is only this layout is not the right one. When I click here, when I show hover over here, you can see three cameras. When I click it, now that layout is selected for this scene. And whatever I select for this scene is what it stays as. So when I click back here to say show on stage host plus guest, host plus guest is here. When I click back here to go host only, host only is here, host plus guest ho with the three cameras. And if I had a third camera, it would actually work. So here now I'm going to click new scene speaker view. I just always pick speaker view. I'm going to click to show on stage, click again to rename this host plus uh, screen I'm Gonna do host plus screen. And again, this is another, you know, this is the fourth scene. So uh, what I need to do, I need to create a new layout, click to plus sign to create a new layout, add item when I add a camera slot, I definitely want to make this fill. Um, make this as wide as I can. I'm trying to keep it the size of my video, right? So boom, boom, boom. All right. Now I want to add another item, add a media slot. And I'm just going to have this take up the whole space um, at the bottom here. Now that's I've kind of come to the edge of it. And so that's what it'll look like. So these are here, I'm going to hit save. And again, host plus screen. Uh, and, and, and man, listen, you, you may even want to put a little V in there because th that'll help you. That'll help you. And so even if I go to the wheel and go to my layouts, 
you'll notice that way down here at the bottom there, these are here. And I'm going to actually edit this to call this uh, V. And again, I, what I, why I'm doing that? Because I want to make sure that I can find these later when I need them. I want to be able to find them and I, I, I want them to be, it, want it to be clear that these are vertical. So now I've got these here, boom, 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 um, close that out. And so I, when I come down here, I can see these scenes are, are, have been designed here. So in this host plus screen scene, I want this host plus screen layout. When I click that layout, notice that this has been added. And when I click to add my, my screen share to the stage, it takes up the whole bottom section. So now I have my camera, I have my screen here, and I'm able to, if I have that, that uh, if I have that, let's go back here. There we go. Let's move this over. You guys are seeing way more than you're supposed to. <laughs> but if I have this screen, you can see that I can scroll around on it. Um, and that is, that is available to me inside StreamYard as I'm showcasing a screen that uh, allows me, I'm gonna cl collapse this a little bit, but that allows me to, a fourth scene. So now this is saved. The layout has to be selected in the scene that you want the layout to be displayed in. in and once you have your scene selected and your layout selected and you add your assets, that scene is ready to go. Scene selected layout selected in that scene and you add the assets that are specific to that scene and you're ready to go. So when I click back through three cameras, click here, two cameras, click here, host only. Um, and the really cool thing about uh, StreamYard, is, especially for this, is that I can put this uh, overlay here in this scene and that's, that overlay stays in that particular scene these overlays are also tied to the scene and you can go between your scenes. You can see that those lay the, those overlays are staying where I want them to. So here, boom, you know, I, I'm just using what's already built into the system. I'm going to go down to this, this uh, host plus screen scene and add something else here as well. And you, again, it's just a matter of utilizing what's there and understanding and stacking the different features, custom layout, making sure you have it added to the scene. Assets are added there, whether it is a screen share, whether it's cameras or you have an overlay or even a background, you want to make sure that all those are added there. So these are four scenes that we have added and built right here in front of you inside of StreamYard. And I believe that will get you across the line in terms of what when you're utilizing StreamYard for a vertical stream, those four scenes, I think, will really be super helpful for you. Um, if you are, if you're new to StreamYard, maybe you're watching this video and you're like, huh, didn't even know StreamYard had those functionalities and you're like, I want to give it a try. Definitely use the link that's on the screen right now and um, it'll give you an extended trial. Uh, definitely, I will get some credit for that because it's an affiliate link, but I did want to make sure that you get a chance to see that. I did mention that we're going to do some bonus uh, updates that uh, YouTube has changed for vertical streaming. And I want to show those to you right now. It's just three quick ones. And the first is streaming across platforms. Uh, they're adding a way to reach viewers on every screen, right? So soon creators will be able to broadcast in both horizontal and vertical formats simultaneously. That's crazy. <laughs> and this again, it makes this video and the ability to stream vertically with StreamYard even that much more critical as you have these functions and features being rolled out by YouTube. Um, they're also building on a successful pilot. We're expanding, they're expanding the ability to react live to content on YouTube, allowing anyone to start a vertical live stream on mobile and react to other live events. That is pretty dope. And you can see they give a little example over to the side here. And then the last thing is AI highlight. AI powered highlights uh, turn live content into lasting content with AI powered highlights. I think that's, those are game changers. I don't know how you're gonna utilize those. Definitely let me know in the comment section because I think it, it really will have impact for many of us as we seek to utilize uh, these platforms and functions and features in our content 
journey. <laughs> One of the things that I love uh, is that even YouTube is joining the fun with these updates and features creators can leverage for deeper engagement and reach. In case you didn't know about the metric ton of updates StreamYard has released, uh, I've put together a state of StreamYard video 2025 just for you. Click right here to watch and I'll see you over there. <laughs> this was a fun one, y'all. Grace and peace.